Hey, what's up? Andrew Kramer here for VideoCopilot.net, and welcome to another very exciting After Effects tutorial. So, I just got back from New York City and uh, had a great time. Now, it's not exactly photorealistic, but it's a pretty cool scene, and you can use it for some motion graphics or maybe some background scenes. Who knows? But here's what we're going to be creating. Okay, so pretty cool. Uh, as you can see, I've got a little Twitch here. Uh, it's one of our plugins from our products page. Very cool plugin. Uh, create some cool distortion noise and things like that. But anyway, there's a lot of things going on here. We have the city background, and basically it's made up of three buildings. And those are scaled up and sized in different ways, so it looks like a complex city. Now, what we need to create is the texture for each of these buildings. Here's what the texture looks like. It's basically a two-dimensional side of the building. Now there's a lot of ways to get a texture like this. You can take a picture of a building, there's texture sites on the internet, and there's also photo sites such as Flickr.com. And if we search for something like City Night Building, we can find a whole bunch of different pictures that people have uploaded of cities at night. Now what's cool about Flickr is if you go into the advanced search, you can check only search with Creative Commons license and check these two to find content to use commercially and content to modify. So you can search there and you know go through all these pictures and you can find some good stuff. Now this picture right here is pretty cool and we're actually going to be using that to extract a good side of a building. Now, you might be able to do this with After Effects with the corner pin, um, you know, but you should, you know, have some Photoshop chops, and uh, we're going to take a look. So, here's the picture. We need to make it a layer, so we can just double click here, and it'll create a layer out of that, and we can move it around. And then we'll choose Edit, Transform, Distort. And what we want to do is straighten it out. So, we need to adjust it until the lines are parallel and things start looking correct. So just uh, make some adjustments. And what I'm looking at is this line making sure it's parallel with the bottom of the document. And likewise at the top here. We can also make some guides to you know help us keep it straight. Okay, so that's pretty close, and we can just go ahead, hit the checkbox or enter, and that transformation will apply. We can get rid of these guides, and we can zoom in here. And what I'm going to do is just crop the image. I'm going to crop it from the top here down to the bottom, a little bit of space at the top. And then we can hit the checkbox or enter again. Now, we've got this uh, side view of a building, almost, and we have a few problems. So I'm just zooming in here, and we want to fill in this area. So we can come over here to the Clone tool, and what we'll do is we'll Alt-click on the top left corner of this side, since it sort of repeats. And then we'll go ahead and draw it in here. So that's pretty good. Probably need a little bit of black down at the bottom. And that looks pretty good. Now the other thing we want to do is fill in this area. Because the perspective shows a lot of the geometry we don't want to see. So what we need to do is exactly what we just did. Is basically take some of the building here and paint over it. And we can probably just... Now depending on the complexity of the building, you can uh, you know double layer this by taking the crop tool and extending it out until the middle point cuts right in the middle and then hit apply. And then we can duplicate the layer uh, by holding down alt and just dragging over and now we have sort of a two-tier uh, building. Now one problem 
is it looks like it's repeating. So we can just bring it down and then duplicate another copy. Once you have it, just go ahead and flatten it. So we can just uh, choose flatten and then save it off into a JPEG. Save as, and we'll call this building side and save. So back to After Effects, what we want to do is take the building side image and drop it into our project. And that way we can start using it to build our city. Let's go and create a new composition. And we'll call this City Night. And we'll use the NTSC widescreen square pixel and we'll set the frame rate to 23.976. And we'll choose OK, 10 seconds. Bam. Then what we need to do is take our building side image and drag it out to our comp. Now it's a bit large, but we need to pre-compose it first. So layer, pre-compose, leave all attributes, and we're going to call this building A side. And we'll choose OK. Then we need to go inside of that comp, alt, double click. Now it's very large, we're at 6% here. So we'll go to the comp settings. And we need to size it down. So we'll lock the aspect ratio and we'll set the width to about a thousand. And we'll choose OK. Then we can scale the image down to the size of the comp now. But quick way, transform, fit to comp. So now we scaled it down and it's not nearly as large. So then we can close the building A side comp. And now we have that comp in here, but we need to pre-compose it again. So we'll choose layer, pre-compose, and we'll leave all attributes, and we'll call this building A. Everything that represents building A is going to be inside of this comp. So we'll take the comp, alt, double click, or just double click if you're on uh, After Effects uh, CS4. And what we need to do is make the layer a 3D layer. And then we'll go to the top view and we're going to duplicate it a few times to make it building shaped. So we'll hit control D or we'll just choose edit duplicate and we'll move it up right along the Z axis. And then we need to duplicate it again. And this time we're going to rotate it on the Y axis and we'll move it over and we'll move it down. So what we're basically doing is making four walls and we'll duplicate the side, control D, and we'll move it over. So if I go to a custom view, we've simply made a building. But we need to make sure that the sides are lining up properly. Otherwise we could have some problems. So if I take the track camera tool, I can move it over and it actually looks pretty good left and the front view so this looks like it's overlapping just a bit too much so we'll slide it over and we'll check the other side also a little bit too much overlap so we'll just move it over okay so go to the custom view and we've got a good looking uh, building here now I also went ahead and created a roof texture and I had to do the same kind of technique sort of skewing it into a square and I did a pretty bad job of painting some of the stuff out but it's really going to be a dark element. So I'll go and bring that out to our comp. Now before we do anything we need to pre-compose it. So we'll call this roof top and we'll go ahead leave all attributes and choose OK make it a 3D layer and then we'll go to the top view and we'll rotate it so uh, hit the W and rotate it flat so 270 or uh, 90 depending on uh, what you think and you just need to line it up now there's no reason why it should line up so perfectly so let's just go ahead double check it and uh, move it up here and uh, okay back to the custom view so I basically took it and I moved it up to the top 
Now, there's some more advanced things that we can do. Also, I will point out that I am using OpenGL always on. So adaptive looks a little bit better, but it's a lot slower. So if we turn on OpenGL and you have a decent uh, video card, you know, this goes pretty quick. Now, even though this is After Effects, we can actually do some pretty complicated modeling, although it just takes forever. But let me just turn you on to a couple of ideas. First, take the roof and double click on the mask tool. So it creates a mask, and then we can double click on the mask and hold down Alt, uh, Control, Shift, and we can scale it uniformly. And when we scale it down, we can make it a little bit inset to that layer. Now if we set the mask to none, it won't actually affect anything. But if we set it to subtract, then we've taken that part of the image away. Well, then we can duplicate the rooftop, control D, and take the bottom copy, and we'll set the mask to none. And then we can move that layer down. And so very simply, we've created, uh, you know, a more realistic uh, rooftop. Now we can see through underneath here a little bit, which we probably don't want that. And we can fix that. Um, this gets a little bit more tricky, but I want to just point you in the right direction. If we take the bottom rooftop piece, the piece that's actually intact, what we can do is grab the mask and slide it over so that we just take a chunk out of it about right here. Now I'm going to duplicate that layer. And so this is the uh, roof bottom, and this is the top roof edge and this is going to be the roof interior wall and we'll go ahead and move the anchor point so take the pan behind tool and we'll move the anchor point all the way up to right here and back to the custom view so basically what we're going to do is rotate this on the x-axis to move it up like that but we want to make sure that our mask is set to add. And that way, we just have a little piece that's being turned up. So, hope you can see that. And then what I can do is turn all the pieces on. Maybe we'll move our roof edge a little higher. So just uh, shut the masks off and move this up a bit. And we can turn on our whole city here, and it looks good. Now, the reason that we pre-composed it is so that if we need to make a color adjustment, we don't have to do it to each layer. Instead, we can Alt-Double-Click and just make an adjustment to the one layer. So I'll do that. Go ahead and uh, basically we want it to be darker since it's uh, somewhat of a night shot. And maybe add a little coolness to it. The side interior wall is uh, only in one place, so we can duplicate that and just move it over to the other side. Although you may want to redo what we just did so that it looks like it's coming from the same place, but I'll let you guys do that. So I'm going to duplicate it again, uh, rotate it, push it back, and then slide it in there. And we'll duplicate it again. Kind of just lining up the corners there. So that looks good. Our four side walls, which we can change the color to, we can go ahead and move those up so that they fill the gap there. In 3D, you can do shadows and, uh, you know, all these different techniques to make it look more realistic. And, and here, it just, you know, it's somewhat flat. So we want to give it a little more detail. So what we're going to do is take the roof bottom piece and we're going to choose Effect Paint Vector Paint. And it comes with all these cool paint tools. We'll go and solo the layer. And we're going to turn the radius up to, uh, we can double click on that. We'll set that to, uh, I don't know, 20. And we'll set the opacity to 5. And the color to black. And then we can unsolo it. And if we roll over, you can see the paintbrush. 
and we can increase the size. Now I'm actually going to turn the opacity up to about 20 or so. We want the feathering to also be on. So what I'll do is make a better view of the top here and we'll zoom out. And what I'm going to do is take the paint tool and just paint in the edges. So that creates a little bit of an edge that your eye can see that, you know, those pieces intersect a bit. So this is just a cool way to get rid of the extra flatness that, you know, After Effects can sometimes give to layers. What I actually did is I took a comp earlier and went ahead and did a little bit more detail. I even added, you know, like an air conditioning unit. As you can see on the top, I just had to turn the lights up there. But So back to the building we're working on, we'll go ahead, extend the building so it's a little bit taller. And we can do that by taking the bottom four layers and duplicating them. So we could take all four, control D, and then move them all down on the Y axis until they line up. So here's our first building. Go ahead and do that for a couple more buildings so we can have a little bit more diversity. But we're going to continue the tutorial with just this one building and uh, see what we come up with. So we can close building A. And now we're back in our main comp. But the problem is it's no longer 3D. So we turn on the continuous rasteration switch here. And then we can create a camera. 24 millimeter, OK. And we also take the building and make sure that the 3D layer switch is on. And then if we take the camera tools here, and we back out, you can see that we have this great 3D looking building, and it's ready to go. Now let's go ahead and switch to the front view. And what we need to do is move the building up and take the pan behind tool and move the anchor point all the way down to the very bottom of the building. And the reason we want to do that is so if we scale the building up and make a few different variations, the floor will always stay at the bottom. So if we go back to the active camera, you can see now we can move this around or scale it and it will pretty much stay in that one spot. Okay, the next part is going to be fun. What we have to do is duplicate the city buildings and spread them around to make a city. So it's it's kind of a fun thing, actually. Um, you basically duplicate it, you move it, you scale it, and you design the city. Um, I actually had this idea about a video game where players could design their own city. And what they could do is they could make parks and they can make buildings and companies and add, you know, people start coming and it's just a really, really cool idea, almost like you're the creator. Um, well, after doing some searching, I found out apparently there's already a game out there called SimCity that lets you simulate, you know, what a city's like. So somebody apparently beat me to it. But frankly, I'm not even that interested in building cities. I'd rather there already be a city and the game is more about, you know, driving around in the city, you know, and stealing cars and, you know, running from the cops and doing little side missions. That's more, you know, what I was thinking. Well, after doing some more searching, apparently there's a game that's exactly like that. It's called Grand Theft Auto. Okay, back to After Effects. What we're going to do is make copies of our building. And we're going to go ahead, change it red, and we'll hit Edit, Duplicate, or Control D and we move it and now we have a copy and we can also scale it up or scale it down just by adjusting it and we can duplicate it again move it around we'll make this one pretty tall maybe shrink the base so it's a little thinner and uh, we'll duplicate this Scale down, duplicate this, scale this down, 
some of the buildings here in the foreground we want to be rather small and larger buildings in the background. And we can actually scale those up very large. And we can go to a top view so that we can move these around. Uh, if we go to, say, a top view, we should be able to zoom out even. And we can also move around and, you know, position these. So go ahead and just start making copies of these buildings and move them around until you have a good looking city. Okay, so I moved the buildings around until we've created a scene like this. Now, there's a few background buildings. There's a couple foreground buildings and just some random ones in the middle. So you want the scene to be a little bit diverse so it looks like there's city all over the place. Now, what I have is a New York City skyline image. And this is just going to add a little bit more realism to the background. So we'll take that image and we'll place it at the bottom of the stack. We'll make it 3D and we'll move it up and we'll scale it. And we actually want to solo this. We actually want to push it way into the background and then scale it. And we'll go ahead, turn it towards the camera here. And we can adjust it a little bit more in a second. But first, let's pre-compose it. So layer, pre-compose, leave all attributes, and choose OK. Now, the thing about pre-composing is then we can Alt double click and edit it. So first, let's make the comp larger in the height. So we'll set it to 1200. Choose OK. And that way we have more room on top. And what we can do then is add in a little bit of color and maybe some stars uh, just to give it a little bit more of a graphical look. First though, let's go ahead and feather off the top of the image. So rectangle mask around the top, subtract, and F, and we'll feather this out. And then we'll create a gradient. So we'll choose new solid. And we want somewhat of a blue gradient. So we'll choose OK. And we'll take the mask tool and shut the eye off. And we want to just draw it about here. And we can turn this back on and we can feather it. So we just want a little bit of color and we can turn the opacity of this down a little bit. And it looks like our gradient isn't quite. There we go. Okay, so close this, let's see, move this up a little bit, go back to our city, and let's just adjust this as needed. And that looks pretty good. We'll go turn everything back on by unsoloing it. And there we have a nice uh, realistic skyline in the background. Now, the next thing we want to do is start making this look cool. So right now, we're getting all the mechanics out of the way, setting our scene up, but we want to make it look good. So let's take the building here in the foreground, and let's find where that is. And it's on top, so that's good. What we'll do is we'll solo that layer, and we'll also solo the background element. And that way we can start color correcting without having the whole scene on and slowing us down. Now I'm going to go into the skyline and we're going to bring the blue down a bit. That looks a little bit better. So that way it's not covering over the entire image. And we might even duplicate this, change it to add, and move it down below where the city is. And what this will do is just give us a little bit of color now the other thing we need to do is create a light. So we'll make a new light and we'll tint it uh, slightly blue. Choose OK. Uh, and don't cast shadows, point light, OK. Then we need to create another light, an ambient light. And this one we'll make, uh, you know, same color. So. so if we hit AA, we can bring up the controls for the lights and such. And we'll go ahead and move our main light. And we'll just push this around. 
until we create an interesting look. Now I will take the background layer and hit AA, bring up the material options and shut off except lights and that way the lights won't affect our background, just our buildings. Okay, so AA to turn this light, turn up the brightness here and you can see as we move it around the scene just takes on a slightly different look. You can move it over here and that way this side's a lot brighter. Maybe t tone it down just a bit. And that's pretty cool. We can even colorize it more, which will just give us, you know, a slightly different look. Let's go ahead, turn all our buildings back on. We'll unsolo. Okay, now to get a more graphical look for our buildings, what I'm going to do is open up one of the buildings, Alt, double click, and then I'm going to Alt, double click on a building side. Let's see, building side. So here is the one image that makes up basically all the building. One of the things I'm noticing is that it's very bright. There's a lot of windows, there's a lot of people home. And I'm going to actually go ahead and black some of them out with a dark solid. So we'll go ahead, we'll shut the eye off. And then we can just take the rectangle tool and we just go through and shut out some of the windows by drawing a box around them. Okay, so there we go. And I'll go ahead and turn that layer on. Okay, so now we've blacked out some of the windows. And if we go back to our night scene, you can see it's not nearly as bright as it was. So that's a good thing. Now we want to color correct our scene a little bit. So what I'm going to do is take our City Night comp and drop it into a new comp. And we'll call it City Night uh, Color Correction. Now let's go ahead and create a new adjustment layer. And we'll do our color correction on this. And also create a black solid to place into the background. So we'll take our color correction layer and we'll choose Effect color correction tint and effect color correction curves and we'll go ahead and set the tint amount to about 20 and let's play around with the curve so we'll go to the red channel we'll bring this down a bit get rid of some of those bright uh, warm colors and the blue channel we'll go ahead and bring some of them up just uh... and then in the RGB channel let's darken the image a bit but not crush it completely we just want it to be sort of dimmed out. And then we can add a glow to our buildings. We can do uh, effect uh, stylize glow. And that'll just give it a little bit of a glow on the windows. Now it seems that this uh, windows here in the background aren't being lit up as much as they should be. So we can double check to make sure our ambient light is set to 100%. And we can probably add some stars also. So what we can do for stars is create a new solid. Black, OK. And we'll choose noise, fractal noise. And we'll go to the transform settings, scale it down a lot. And then turn the contrast up and the brightness down. And until you get... Uh, some uh, little stars there. So we'll change the transfer mode to add and we'll move this up so that it's just above the buildings and then we can check out the final comp here. Alright so we've got some nice stars back there and our color correction is still a little off so let's go back to the color correction and uh, desaturate it a little bit more and maybe bring the brightness overall down some. Bring some of that down. Okay, let's add a camera move and our title. So we'll go back to our City Night comp and things are going to be a little slow and we'll change it to uh, OpenGL and we'll take the text tool and we'll type uh, video copilot 
Now I'm going to solo the first building here, the front building, and I'm also going to solo our text. And we'll make our text 3D, and uh, we'll move it up. And this way, I can see what my camera move is going to do, but it won't have to render all of the buildings. Now, I am using a font called Capture It, and I think you can uh, do a Google search and find that font for free somewhere. And uh, we'll move this up. And we'll take our camera, we'll hit P, hold down Shift, hit A. And uh, we'll just create a little camera animation where the camera just sort of flies forward and maybe over to the side here. So kind of just a nice little movement. Maybe we'll even start a little closer here. And really just kind of fly over it and then we can unsolo our layers now what I did in the original example if I go back is I dimmed out everything in the city and that way my text would pop so this is actually a good lesson that that I learned uh, somewhere along the way and it's basically that if you make everything really pop and everything have a really high contrast then it's hard to focus on one element. And in the case of doing motion graphics where you just want the ambience of a city, but really you want people to read what your title is. So the thing you can do is take an adjustment layer and place it below your title and use the exposure and drop the exposure about 1.5. So it gets a little darker, but your tagline and your text really pops out. The other thing that might be happening here is our titles are being affected by the lights. So we can hit AA and accept lights off. And that way our titles won't be affected and they will pop out a little bit more, a little too much. So let's bring that back a bit. Now we might want to just make that negative 0.75 and uh, go check out our color correction. So here you can see our city is a little dimmer but our text is nice and bright. It's a little too bright even. Uh, we may lower the glow amount uh, so it doesn't get you too much. Okay, let's go and add that nice lens effect that we saw in the original example where it somewhat looks like condensation. And what we can do is take a cool texture image. So here I have this kind of spotty texture and we actually gave away some very cool textures on the blog and uh, those might work but really you just need a texture with little specks that can be contrasted. Now in this case we're gonna invert it and we'll tint it and then we'll use the curves adjustment to contrast it. So this is what we want to see. Now I'm going to go ahead and pre-compose this and move all attributes and we'll call this uh, lens effects and choose OK. Then we'll choose effect, blur, lens blur and we can repeat edge pixels if we're in uh, CS3 and what we're gonna do is turn the iris amount up now we start losing the detail so what we need to do is turn down the specular threshold and turn up the specular brightness and so now we can see those lens elements and we can make it uh, you know various shapes and let's just turn up the radius again and we'll change the transfer mode to screen and we can colorize it just a bit with a curves adjustment and we can uh, add a little blue and one other cool tip is if you go into the effects and presets you can look for an effect called find edges apply that and it's going to create some, you know, sharp edges there. Now, if we invert that, we see sort of rings, and we might e even be able to enhance that. Yeah, turning up the curves there sort of enhances that. And then we can set the find edges amount to say 80. 
And that way that edge will just blend with the outside. So maybe uh, 60. And that way it looks a little bit more like uh, you know an out-of-focus element. And so then turn everything back on here. And uh, I think we're, uh, we're looking pretty good. We can size that down to maybe 60 or so. And, uh, you know, lower the opacity or play around with the color to uh, dim it out a bit. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Be sure to check out the website. We've got a great blog, a lot of free things there, project files and textures. And, of course, we have a great section called Products where you can buy Twitch, Evolution, Ride Gear, a lot of cool elements uh, for your work. Uh, you know, definitely helps to support the site. Um, anyway cool project and I hope you guys had fun with it. My name is Andrew Kramer for videocopilot.net. We'll see you next time.